thing. Uh, and, 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 and this, this whole alien anthropology, socioanalysis thing is just like a crystallization and coalescence of a lot of things that Nancy and I have been doing and it's bringing shit together in a way that I didn't really think it would. And I mean, I, yeah, I don't know if you want to go there. I did set you up earlier. I said we'd put it off to the side and bring it back. And then that's Nance, the whole thing with Verifacus and you know, feudalism. Oh, yeah. And so if yeah. you dangle it from my face, I will, I will, I'll play tricks till I fall dead on the floor. <laughs> I'm going to listen to you guys while I make myself a little coffee and shit like that. Uh, I'll be in the other room, but yeah, don't. I, I think uh, Verifacus is interesting. I like Verifacus, but I have some big problems with his approach. But this idea of, of techno-feudalism, neo-feudalism, something else. I mean, just the other day, we were talking to Benjamin, and, and we were like, well, maybe it's just a modification of neoliberalism itself. I think it's undeniable. I think we're staring it in the face. Um, and I think it's happening because... Like society has progressed to a point, social technologies, political technologies, cultural technologies have have led us to this ground where money, the money commodity, no longer sufficiently articulates value and no longer reliably facilitates exchange. And this goes back to money as a universal translator like money is the thing that allows you to exchange with people who exist outside of your in group or whatever group it is that you belong to so before we had capitalism we had symbolic exchange baudrillard is big on symbolic exchange uh koji karatani is big on exchange itself and walter binyamin also kind of gave me some unique insights into why does symbolic exchange work in the first place and it's because objects of use have, like it, it's, it, it's not always just reduced down to exchange value or use value. Like there is what Benjamin calls the aura of originality. And that's basically just like here in this notebook that I'm holding up, like, yes, it's mass produced. Yes, it's probably made by a fucking robot or a child in China. Yes, it's cheap and I'm contributing to the end of the world when I buy things like this, but it also has a unique history. And if it was made by a child, it was touched by the hands of a child. And if it was made by a robot, it was touched by a robot that was itself touched by the hands of someone else. So there is human essence tied up in my objects of use. So we are forced to see objects of use as commodities because that's just the way the world works. But everything has Again, Benjamin calls it the aura of originality. I want to come up with my own term for it because that, I think, lends itself to mysticism a little bit too much. And, and it is a very material thing. It's a concrete material thing. You don't have to do mysticism. Although I think it's, I allow for mysticism as well. Like, I think it's important to be inclusive when it comes to that because the human, from my perspective, I want to put the human first. I want to center the human uh, but from others' perspective, I can understand how the human is just an emanation of God or divinity or whatever. And, and I'm like, okay, so you want to center divinity as long as your divinity takes the form of a human. I, 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 I do care less at that point about the content. It is about the form. And the form is the human, is subjectivity, whatever it is that we are. And we're more than just like embodied intelligence. We're more than just metabolic activity. There's something spiritual there's something numinous. There's something to this concept of a soul. And it, again, I say that in the most atheist way I possibly can. But I also, yeah, sure. If, if, if you believe in God, that's cool. I respect that. But like all our objects of use have an aura of originality. And the way political and social technology developed over time to facilitate exchange global exchange or even regional exchange when groups reached a point they necessarily had to exchange outside their tribe or outside their in group or whatever and the commodity form emerged and over time the money commodity emerged as the kind of the prime commodity and that was the universal translator so it didn't it didn't matter that you and i didn't speak the same language it didn't matter that you and i didn't recognize each other as equals or in some cases even the same species because we had the money commodity we had the universal translator to facilitate exchange but 
money itself or the commodity form itself is is kind of just an articulation of what we're now calling symbolic capital because we're we're able to see this through Bordeaux like there's something to the idea of wealth that value doesn't capture um so with symbolic capital it's about distance from necessity it's about the fact that i don't have to get my hands dirty look at me i'm fancy i'm wealthy i have my needs taken care of and assuming that because i have my needs taken care of i can then pursue you know my mind my spiritual development the the human technologies um i'm a trustworthy worthwhile person so you and i can kind of like develop some shared grounds there and we can we can trade we can exchange Dude, yes sorry um, yes i just wanted to say yes the you brought in i'm trustworthy that's so important it's fuck it, it because of my distance from necessity you can trust me because I'm not if someone a was doing if if someone was doing this for money you wouldn't trust them because they'd be trying to get money from you They're grifters, but because right? i'm not doing this for mo- because i'm not a grift because i'm not doing this for money you know i'm not a grifter that's what Bordeaux is addressing this is why it's a self to he calls it martial arts and he means for it to be a martial arts for countering the pmc yeah uh well and, and yep. that's why like the, the vul- vulgarity right. and nobility like yeah that's great the vulgar the workers are vulgar and the elites are noble and they are trying uh trustworthy and kind and caring and you can be sure and that's why priest classes kind of do fit so well into a noble or a structure of nobility even though it's not the same thing like there, there's there's this idea of nobility with the ascetic with the monk with the i don't know church um but because neoliberalism has progressed, productivity and consumption are different now. Base and superstructure have changed. Money just doesn't cut it anymore. So we're returning to a mode of exchange that's predicated on symbolic capital rather than just economic capital. Um, because we have to make ourselves intelligible. We, The money, the universal translator that we used to have is breaking down. So you're a deplorable, you're a bad, horrible, bad person. I can't trust you. I don't want to engage in exchange with you. I don't want to engage in human Congress with you, human intercourse. Um, so value, exchange, money's breaking down. That's one side of it. There's this entirely other side of it that has to do with expenditure. Um, and it has to do with the fact that from capital's perspective, all it all capital is concerned with is converting resources into waste. And I arrived here from Bataille, the solar anus. We take in light from the sun. We excrete waste products in the form of commodities, in the form of refuse, in the form of, you know, garbage. So somehow, and I don't know how or where, but somehow that that conversion rate, that conversion mechanism, that metabolism also fits into value and it i mean it might come down to the fact just that like that is that is how you calculate the the metabolic side of the human expenditure how much and well and then again going back to like socially average socially necessary labor time like that's marx is is trying to calculate this metabolism um but it seems like capital is on a runaway course where it's just going to go and keep metabolizing the entire planet until we die. And there's really nothing we can do about it because we're working with outdated terms and outdated conceptions of value and exchange and belonging and social structures and even politics themselves, because we are becoming something like neo tribes, even like along with neo feudalism, you have new versions of belonging. Dugan does his thing. I think he's wrong. I think he's worth reading. But, and he's he's worth reading because he's on to something, the fact that we are fragmenting in this way where people are like fragmenting, fragmentations are going to start to ossify. And we're going to start seeing people who literally believe they are cyber Mongols and people who literally believe they are cyber uh, Puritans and pilgrims. And, and there's going to be just these deep reified divides in society where people don't intercommunicate, intermix, intermingle. Um 
And yeah, dude, Bordeaux is like for me right now, my two guys, well, I guess my three guys is uh, Bordeaux and Lumen because like all this other shit, um, systems, capital treats us like systems. Capital doesn't treat us like subjects. So I want to understand that kind of systems thinking because that's the way capital thinks. And again, I'm anthropomorphizing here, but it serves my purpose. But Capital treats us like systems. We know we're subjects. So Bordeaux, Lumen, and I think I always got to go back to Bataille. Bataille's always going to be my guy. Because um, Bataille's cool and edgy. Great reason. Yeah. And yeah, Brian McLuhan also, the re retribalization. Yeah, absolutely. 